Welcome to another episode of Preparing for the Unexpected. I'm your host, Alex Fullick, and as always, we like to talk about things related to risk, cyber, business continuity, resilience, anything that helps you, your organization, or your community prepare for, respond to, and overcome adverse situations. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please feel free. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm the only Alex Fullick there. I'm really easy to find, and I do respond to everything I get. Today, we're going to be talking about the risk intelligence forecast for 2024, which came from Factal. And I want to welcome to the show today one of the co-founders of Factal, and uh, I want to get this right, the co-host of the podcast Global Security Briefing. Did I get the name right? You did. Good. Great. Then I want to welcome to the show someone I met at DRJ Fall 2023, Corey Bergman. Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Alex. Appreciate it. Now, I know we chatted at DRJ. We've chatted through email um, and and some other things here. But could you take a minute or two and tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and how you got into what you do? Sure. Yeah, my story is an interesting one in that I I realized uh, a couple of years ago that I've dedicated most of my professional life to the study of breaking news, which has got to be one of the oddest things to focus your life in doing. (laughs) Um, but I can remember back when I was just, you know, 17 years old, 18 years old, driving my little Nissan pickup truck around the greater Sacramento area with a scanner mounted on it, listening to police and fire calls and showing up at different scenes and calling the local television station, <laughs> what's going on. Um, you know, that sort of, I was always sort of enthralled by the, all of that, uh, especially the news aspect of it. So there's something happening right now and how to go get that information, cover that information, get it out to people as quickly as possible. And uh, so I spent the first part of my life really working in television news, all the way from local television stations up to NBC News, uh, and then from both from the field producing aspect of it to being the assignment editor who sent the people out into the field, uh, and then went into the digital side uh, and worked for the NBC News digital team. Uh, And we created something called Breaking News uh, inside of NBC News, which is breakingnews.com and at Breaking News on Twitter. We had the Breaking News name across all these social platforms. And so we were looking for the first uh, confirmed uh, breaking news of events around the world and linking the original source rather than just linking the, you know, the same brand for the news organization, but looking who had it first. Uh, And that became very, very popular, Uh, created a mobile app around that as well, the Breaking News app. Uh, and NBC News loved it for a while, and then shut us down after several years. It was hard to monetize. Uh, people did not want to buy ads around breaking news for all the reasons you might expect. Uh, but we had such an outpouring of interest from companies who used uh, breaking news in an enterprise fashion, which was a bit of a surprise to us. Uh, and so we created a new company called Factal that created an enterprise version of uh, what we did at Breaking News but focused around security and business continuity and resilience. So you could be able to detect what's happening in the world, know that it's real, see if you have a risk exposure to it in real time. And so that's, that's in fact, it was born about five years ago and uh, we've been growing ever since. Well, well congratulations. Thank now, you. Now, you published, uh, recently published this report, uh, Risk Intelligence Forecast for 2024. So tell us, how did the report come about? Well, it was. It, we've seen so many just changes in the space, and we felt we felt that um, at first it was just going to be a blog post, and then as a, as uh, you know, we continued to look into. It, we kept finding new uh, trends and topics to add, and just kind of expanded into a, a report of itself. And so, uh, we ended up with fifteen different trends that we we packed in it. Uh, but there's just so much going on these days, especially in the information space, and, and obviously in security and, and business continuity and supply chain across the board. Uh, there's just a lot to capture, and, and I hope it isn't outdated in the next six months, but it just, it just, everything is changing so quickly. <laughs> it does. Every day uh, when I turn on the news, there's something new that's happening. You know, and something that was in a headline a day or two before is almost virtually not reported anymore because there's just so much happening so fast. Absolutely. It, it is, um, it's it just, it's a wild environment. And then you have all these other, you know, AI and, and just the, the changes around the world, the geopolitics are just fueling a lot of this. So did you use um, some of your, uh, um, I, I've forgotten the name of the application, but the facto application, shall we say, um, you can correct me in your response uh, to 
pull the information for this report together or did you send out some sort of a survey to to people yeah i mean we, we're always talking to our members and and running surveys and and asking what their you know their priorities are so it's a bit of an amalgamation of, of talking with uh, you know, we have a lot of Fortune 500 uh, members of FACTL and then a lot on the NGO side as well. And so, uh, and, and then also just looking at, because we're a little bit unique in that we have our own newsroom. So the way we operate is we've built a signal detection platform on top of social media and different news sources that's looking for any early indications of something occurring. And then the output of that goes to a newsroom that's staffed 24 seven with journalists that then are I triangulating that information, verifying that information, publishing it as quickly as possible in a way that our members then can customize what they get, correlate it to their locations around the world and different industries that they're in, uh, and be able to uh, get a, a you know curated feed of, uh, of real-time incidents around the world without all the noise that you would expect from social media. Uh, and so for our own news team, has seen a lot of this occurring on themselves because they're very much at the front end of conflict uh, you know, they were reporting very early on the, the early chatter that led to the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, the very first reports coming out of Israel on the, the Hamas attack. And so we're at the very leading edge of that. And we see a lot of the information trends that, that take place. So it was a combination of the two then? That's how you it was, yeah. to, like surveys and all this leading edge monitoring? Absolutely. Uh, it pull, pulls it together. Okay. I'm just curious to uh, as to how it came about because sometimes uh, these reports are just done by uh, clients only and then saying this is what the world is doing well meanwhile no it's just what your clients are doing that's all right right <laughs> so that's why right. i'm curious to know exactly <laughs> and i know we're going to touch on a bunch of uh, some of the, the findings that you uh, have because uh, you mentioned uh, what was it? it's 15 right and 15 we'll, we'll touch on maybe half because i don't want to give everything away um, to, to to our listeners and make them go go to factual and have a look at the report and download it and read it. Out of all the findings and responses that you got, what was one of the biggest surprises to you? Um, I think just the the increasing volume of real time information around incidents that are happening in real time. I, the so for example. In our own platform, we've seen uh, about a two to three X increase in volume since summer of last year. Uh, and a lot of that's the stacking conflicts of Ukraine, Russia, and now Gaza uh, and Israel. Uh, you know, one doesn't replace the other, they, they just stack. Uh, and then you have just all the other uncertainty and events that are taking place around the world. Uh, and so just the volume of real-time news coverage, of uh, people talking about news coverage, uh, Along with, then we'll talk a little bit about this, but the fragmentation of social platforms, people moving to different platforms, they're not all concentrated as much as any, anymore. And then that creates a lot of duplication of content. Uh, and so the, just the volume just keeps growing up and up and up. So it's harder and harder to really make sense of what's happening in the world. You can't just sit down in front of TweetDeck and have your nicely curated list anymore and really get a nice view. Yeah. Um, it's just becoming really noisy. So how do you, I'm curious, uh, going a little off topic here, how do you make sense of all the noise? Because you mentioned so many different social media platforms. So that usually means just as many different opinions. <laughs> so how do you work your way through that noise to find out what is actual actually true? Yeah, I, everything begins with the source. And, and we've spent a lot of time in uh, researching and uh, tracking performance of sources over time. And so that can be anywhere from you know, media sources to government sources uh, to uh, uh, really anybody who's the original source of information. Uh, and because there's so much uh, recycled media and duplication that takes place and people uh, don't source the original source, they just put it out there. And so, in those cases where there's just so much clutter, you just tip, you want to drill down to who should know and what are they saying, right? And so having all that, those sources figured out in advance, we have done that across the board for every country. Um, we can go in and say, you know, what are the most cited sources that we've reported from in any given region, in any given language? 
uh, in any given country. And then that gives us that that starting point to really say, OK, with the people that should know, what are they saying? And then comparing that information with each other and then using the expertise of our journalists who have the historic knowledge of an area that mm -hmm. have that have a language background to be able to gut check that information that is just not um, something that is too good to be true or something that's clearly uh, down the wrong, wrong path. Yeah, because there's a lot, there's so much, like I said, that comes out there these days. And um, I, I I don't know about you, but every time I'm on YouTube, because I'm on YouTube a lot, obviously with all my own channels and things like that, that every day there's a, a new news feed. I was like, well, mm. who are they? <laughs> right. <laughs> Where where are they from? And they've got right. their own opinion, and you, they're reporting on something. And I, I've actually seen reports, and maybe you've encountered this, and you can you can confirm or deny. But a story has literally opposing views. One says the sky is blue, and the other one says no, it's cloudy. And you know, you're they're both talking about the same thing. It's like, well, one of them is lying, <laughs> obviously. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's tough because it well first there's no barrier to entry, right? You anybody can create uh, a YouTube channel. Doesn't I mean it's good, but anybody can create one. Uh, and then you and then you have really this the confirmation bias and filter filter, bu filter mm -hmm. bubbles that occur, where given the political polarization, especially in the United States, people tend to to stick to the sources that that agree with them, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore they don't have exposure to anyone that's challenging those views. Uh, and so it creates these alternate realities. And that's been, that's really tough. And typically, you know, in our space, we don't, uh, we're not focused on what one political party says versus the other political party says that, unless it involves something that is you know, of risk to companies and people on the ground. However, all this is interrelated. And, you know, you see clearly with, you know, we'll, we'll probably keep talking about this, but the U.S. election uh, has all kinds of implications that go beyond just the simple politics of it. Um, and so everything from geopolitics to uh, everything in the United States and, and um, civil unrest that might be attached to it. And so there's so many different pieces of it. Uh, and so it's it, it, in a world where people stick to the sources that they, that they believe in, uh, everyone kind of has their own version of the facts. And then all of a sudden now you're getting into the world where everyone is fact checking everything else. So if everyone has their own fact checkers, which fact checkers do you believe? Um, mm -hmm. And it just gets really messy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into the, uh, the, the findings, one more question, um, and then we'll take a quick break. Was there anything in the report you thought would appear that didn't from your own viewpoint, things that you've seen over the last few years? Like, I'm surprised I didn't make the list. Well, yeah, there's some things that I think that I just felt that wouldn't materially advance in the next year. They might just be too far out. Um, so there's different, you know, trends with quantum computing and different trends with, you know, VR, AR that I felt that just wouldn't move a lot in this coming year, but certainly have potential to move a lot in the years to come. And so um, that's, I think those technologies are, are you know, here, but not quite fully here yet and so mm -hmm. the impact is, is pretty nominal for this year yeah i'd be interested to see what the vr impact is going to be considering the like you mentioned the word uh, polarization already so does vr become an escape for people and that creates a whole new set of issues for people that are uh, denying the real world so to speak Absolutely. Full AI into that as well. And so you've got your, you know, your own AI driven personalities in that space as well. And absolutely. Yeah. Well, on that, we've come to the end of our first segment. We are talking with Corey Bergman today about the risk intelligence forecast for 2024. And we will be right back. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, Stay prepared, everybody.